Hey everybody, it's Vault Box. Welcome back to my channel. And today's video is a very long overdue requested video from you guys. And that is on how I scale my 3D printed helmets. Special shout out to my patrons for making this video possible. And if you would like to join them here on the screen or just to see some of my behind the scenes content, you can head over to patreon.com slash vault box. I would greatly appreciate it if you would check it out. And I hope to see you over there. Some of you might remember this older video here where I show you how I scaled some of my armor. And yeah, I'm still working on that tech cosplay, I swear. And I basically used a tailor's measure and Kira in order to scale my models appropriately. And to be honest, that was kind of the way that I was scaling my armor for like the past two and a half years or so. And then I kind of got smarter the past like end of 2021 with my Mando and Bo-Katan build. And that's what I'm going to be showing you here today. So the biggest issue with doing it, like I showed in that previous video, is that all of the items that I was scaling, I was scaling off of the outside measurement of that file. And as we all know, there is an internal measurement to every single file that we work with. And that's an actual better accurate representation of the sizing that we should be going for. So I did a little bit of digging and there's actually a way to do it in Mesh Mixer, which is a program that I've used previously to slice my helmets and other things like that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. For this tutorial, you're going to need a pair of calipers. You can either 3D print a pair like I did, or you can just like purchase a pair off of Amazon or something. You're going to want a tailor's measure or some sort of a measuring tool. Millimeters is best here if you have that, but if you're like me and don't, centimeters is fine. And last, you'll just need Mesh Mixer downloaded it onto your computer and your 3D file that you want to scale. Today we'll be walking you through how I was able to scale the Mandalorian helmet for my husband and if you want to see how I finished it I will link that video up above for you guys but just remember that every helmet that you're going to want to scale is going to have different challenges for it and you may need to take more measurements or you may need to take less measurements depending on how complex the file is and how like fitted you want it to your face. But if you want me to show this type of scaling method for other helmets that I've made or you know even ones that you might be interested in just leave them down in the comments comments below and I will see what I can do. Now before we even get into Mesh Mixer, let's start with the basics and let's actually go and get the measurements of our head. For that, go grab your pair of calipers and measure the widest part of your head. Now for most of us, that's usually like where the temple slash like your eyes are. Once you've got that measurement, you're going to take your calipers and lay them next to your measuring tool and write down that number that you're getting. This measurement is going to be your X axis. Next, we're going to take the calipers and do the front to back measurement. I like to measure from like the tip of my nose to about the like nape of my neck a little bit higher than that. Now I typically only use these two measurements and I've been pretty successful with that but if you want to go one step further you can do your Z axis as well and that is just taking the calipers and measuring from about the middle of the top of your head to the bottom of your chin. But like I said I usually only do the X and Y axis and I've had pretty good success with that. But again every helmet is different so you may need to have more measurements than I do. Now that we have all of our measurements if you haven't already you're going to want to convert them all into millimeters using an online converting tool or if your brain is just that smart then go ahead and do it in your head and then we're ready to look at our helmets and mesh mixer i'm going to be looking at the mandalorian helmet and it's actually one of the easier helmets to scale out there i know that i say that as someone who messed up the scaling like three times but i promise it's actually not that hard had i actually like used my brain cells and hadn't like winged it the first time i was scaling this helmet so with the file pulled into mesh mixer i'm going to go to the toolbar and click on analysis and once that's clicked on you're going to scroll to the measurement option. Once you click on that, you're going to have a couple options pull up. And what you're going to want to do is click on this option with the two circles, click on that. And for now, I'm going to select X as my direction, but just make sure to keep note of this because this is where we can change it to verify the uh, Y and Z axis is later. And then I'm going to click on snap to vertices and then done. And once you've clicked done, a red line is going to pop up on your model as well as like this measurement off to the right hand side. You can move this red line around to measure between whatever two points you want to on the X axis. So what you're going to want to do to get a more accurate measurement is make sure that that red line is sitting just inside the inner wall of your file and then stretch it to the other point of the opposite wall so that we can get this accurate measurement of the inside of our helmet. Now for Mando's helmet, the bottom of the helmet all the way up to the point where the dome begins is roughly the same width. So this is where you're going to want to take your X measurement that you took on your actual head and compare it to what Mesh Mixer is spitting out for you. Once you have the X measurement for the inside walls of your helmet, you could repeat the same steps to get your Y and Z number numbers if you're so choosing to get your Z numbers. You're just going to repeat the same steps by going up to analysis and just change it to the appropriate axis and measure from front to back and top to bottom. Once you have all of your internal measurements, you can then start to worry about scaling. So obviously, if your internal measurements are higher than your head measurements, then you're probably going to be good to go to scale your helmet. But it also means that you could probably scale the helmet down a little bit so that you can have a tighter fit or a more like snug fit to your face if that's something that you're 
looking for. And for me, with my helmet, my husband's measurements were just a little bit too close to the internal measurements of the helmet. So I knew that everything needed to be scaled up just a touch. Again, just a reminder, everyone has a preference whenever it comes to finishing their helmets and how they fit. And you don't want to forget about like accounting for things like padding inside of your helmet or fans, if that's something that you're looking into doing. You're all probably familiar with me scaling my files in Cura. That's nine times out of 10 where I'm doing it, but I'm actually trying to get into the habit of doing it directly in Mesh Mixer because it just kind of saves me an extra step later on down the line. And I know that it'll be properly scaled for me whenever I go to print it. You're just going to want to go and click on the edit button on the left-hand side in your toolbar and then click on edit. And whenever you do that, you're going to see all of these X, Y, and Z numbers, and you're going to see a one next to them. And that basically just means that one is 100% scale. For me, I knew I needed this helmet to be just a little bit larger. So I'm going to end up changing this from a one to 1.03. And then to make sure that everything is scaled uniformly, just make sure you have that box checked underneath all the X, Y, Z numbers. Once you select done, your file is going to have resized here in Mesh Mixer, and you can go back and remeasure your X, Y, Z measurements to see if you're closer to where you want to be. And for me, 103% ended up being the perfect scaling for this helmet. Now you can also go the opposite way. And if you want to scale something down, then you'll just take that number one and you'll subtract it like from decimal points. So instead of, you know, 1.03, I would have like 0.97 to say that I wanted a 97% scale on the helmet to see those measurements. Again, scaling is going to take a little bit of practice to know how much wiggle room you want in your helmets or how closely you want them to fit your face. But in a completely generalized sense, if your head's XYZ measurements all fit within your print's inner wall XYZ measurements, you're probably going to be good to go for it to fit your head. Now, once you've finished all of your scaling and exported your file, you can, you're pretty much good to go to start printing it. But if you want to be extra sure about your scaling, you can then go ahead and print out test slices of your helmet or your armor or what have you or whatever you're printing. What I typically recommend is printing out a slice at the very bottom opening of your helmet, as well as the visor area to confirm that they fit. And to do this, all you're going to do is go back into Mesh Mixer and hit on the edit button in the toolbar and select on plain cut. Now, whenever you have this plain cut tool open, you're just going to drag the plane to where you want to slice and you're going to hit done. And it's going to look like nothing happened, but you're just going to go back up into that edit panel and select separate shells. And once you confirm that, it will show you that you've got two pieces to your helmet. I've got like this big piece here, and then I've got this tiny little slice down here at the bottom. You can then select this specific part on the bottom and export it as an STL to print out as your fitting test. Now make sure whenever you print out these fitting tests that you're going into your slicer and you're tuning your settings accordingly so that you're not wasting a ton of filament on things like infill and stuff, especially because this doesn't need to withstand any sort of like beating or force or anything like that. You just want to save as much filament as possible. You can repeat these steps for any specific part of your helmet that you'd like to test the fit on. Like I've got the dome here. I've also got the visor as well. And you can print these out really quickly just to confirm that they're going to fit before you waste like four to five days of printing to realize that it doesn't fit because yeah, I've 100% been there. I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> Anyways, that's all that I've got for you guys today. I hope that this video was helpful. I do plan on making videos similar to this in line with certain parts of the Mandalorian build as well as Bo-Katan in terms of scaling. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!